Data Query Language, or DQL as it's abbreviated, is used to retrieve data from databases. DQL consists of the SELECT command. The SELECT command tells the database which fields or columns it would like to retrieve from tables held in the database. The syntax for a simple SELECT statement is to type SELECT followed by the columns you would like to select, separated by a comma. When you specify the final column, you type FROM and then the name of the table you would like to query from. There is no comma before the from keyword. If you want to query all of the columns from a table, a shortcut can be to type select followed by an asterisk, or also known as a star symbol, which is a wildcard character. Wildcard characters can be used to substitute characters and strings. The asterisk represents zero or more characters, and by using the asterisk, it is the same as saying you want to select all columns from a table. So I'm in MySQL Workbench and I want to query a table in my user1 schema. You can see that there's a table called emp which contains data for employees in a fictional company. If I want to return the employee's name, I can perform a SELECT on the ENAME column. I type SELECT ENAME from EMP and hit RUN. But first, I need to activate the user1 schema. At present, you can see that the SYS schema is highlighted in bold. If I want to use the user1 schema, I type USE USER1, terminate with a semicolon, and hit RUN. Now you can see that the user1 schema is highlighted in bold. So let's select the ename column from the emp table. Click on the lightning bolt icon. As you can see, I've returned the employee's names in that table. Now if I want to re return the employee's name and salary, I can include the ename column and the sal column, which is the salary. So I can edit this query to, to be select ename, comma, cell from emp. And now you can see we've returned the employee's name along with the salary. Now, if I want to return all columns from this table, I would have to manually type every single column name. So emp no, comma, ename, comma, job, comma, manager, comma, higher date, comma, cell, comma, com, which is short for commission, and finally, comma, depth no, which is the department number, and click run. Now I've returned all columns from the table. As I was mentioning, for a shortcut, I can use the asterisk symbol, or the star wildcard, as it's also known. And that will be the same as me typing out this entire string. So if I replace this string with an asterisk symbol, this would be the same as telling SQL that I would like to select all columns from the emp table. If I click on run, you can see that that returns the same query and it selected all columns. Note that if you're querying tables from a different schema than is currently being used, then you have to prefix the table name with the external schema's name. Currently, my user1 schema is being used as it's highlighted in bold in the left pane. If I open the user2 schema, there is a table called depth. If I try to query this table, it won't work as the depth table doesn't exist in the user1 schema. As you can see, there is only an emp table. If I type select star from depth, as you can see, I get an error. user one depth doesn't exist. So I have to prefix the schema user two dot depth. This tells the SQL engine to look in the user two schema for the depth table. And as you can see, the query has worked.
If I want to activate the user2 schema on MySQL, I type use user2, terminate with a semicolon. And now, as you can see, the user2 schema is active as it's highlighted in bold in the left pane. So if I now type select star from debt, this time the query works because I'm in the user2 schema. But if I type select star from emp, and emp is a table in the user1 schema, this no longer, this no longer works. As you can see, I get an error. user2.emp doesn't exist. If I prefix this with the user1 schema, now the query works. So just as a note, if you are querying a table that's in an external schema, you will need to prefix the external schema name. You can alias your column names so that they are renamed when you return your query results. To alias the column, you type the as keyword after the column name and then specify the alias. Note that if you're aliasing with a name that has white space characters, then you need to enclose in double quotes or single quotes. So let's query the emp table again. Currently, the user1 schema is active, as you can see it's highlighted in bold. I want to rename the ename column to first name. So I type select ename as, now because I intend to use whitespace characters, I'll enclose the alias in double quotes, first name from emp and click on run. And as you can see, the ename field is showing the alias in the query results. Note that this does not change the column's name in the underlying table, just in the query results. It's also not mandatory to include the as keyword. You can just type the alias after the column name with a space between it, like this. But it's advised to use the as keyword because it's easier to read the code. You can also select multiple columns and alias as many as you like. So in this instance, I'll select ename, which I'll alias to first name, and I'll also select the employee number, but I won't alias that. And the query also works. I can also add sal and alias that as salary. I don't need to enclose it in double quotes because there's no white spaces in the alias name and click on run. So you don't have to alias every single field if you don't want to. You can alias a select number of fields. It's up to you. The formatting doesn't really matter either. You can type everything in one line or you can leave spaces. And the query still works the same.